welcome to this subject introduction video for OCR's 2016 Level 3 Cambridge Technicals in Engineering. My name is Sarah Puddell, I'm a Development Specialist at OCR and I've been working on the development of the Engineering Cambridge Technicals. I'm really excited to be able to share with you our 2016 Cambridge Technicals Engineering Suite. They're available for teaching from September 2016 and contain five different sizes of qualification. The Certificate, Extended Certificate, Foundation Diploma, Diploma and Extended Diploma. The Certificate and Extended Certificate size qualifications are categorised by the DfE as Applied General. The Foundation Diploma, Diploma and Extended Diploma are all categorised as Tech Level. All qualifications are graded at Pass, Merit Distinction and Distinction Star. The Engineering Suite consists of 25 units, which we will look at later. All units are graded as a pass, merit or distinction. For qualification certification, all units must be achieved at a minimum of pass level. We've designed the qualifications to give students flexibility within their study programme. Depending on the size they choose to study, your students' Cambridge Technical in Engineering may make up the bulk of their two-year study programme or be taken alongside other vocational or academic qualifications. Whatever route they choose, you can be confident that your students will be able to progress to a university degree programme or into employment or onto an apprenticeship where they could continue to study. Now let's look at the structure of the different size qualifications, starting with the applied general categories. The certificate is 180 guided learning hours, which is the same size to one AS level. Your students will need to complete three units to achieve this qualification. Unit one and unit two are mandatory, your students will then choose one unit from the two optional units available at this size. The certificate gives a broad grounding across the subject. This qualification is suitable for students looking for a smaller qualification that will complement the main subjects in their study programme and prepare them for further study. The extended certificate is 360 guided learning hours, which is the same size as 1A level. Your students will need to complete six units. There are four mandatory units, units one to four, and all of these units are externally assessed. Your students then choose two units from the eight optional units available at this size. This gives students the flexibility to take other qualifications, vocational or academic, to progress to a university degree programme or into employment where they could continue to study. Now let's look at the structures for the tech level categories. These are all diploma qualifications where your students select a chosen pathway. The foundation diploma is 540 guided learning hours which is the same size as three AS levels, or one and a half A levels. There are four pathways available to students, each leading them towards specific occupations within the engineering sector. These pathways are mechanical engineering and design, electrical and electronic engineering, automation, systems and control, and manufacturing. Your students will need to achieve a total of nine units to complete this qualification, at least three of these will be externally assessed. Your students then choose six units, either examined or internally assessed, and moderated by us. These make up the specialist pathways. Your students could also achieve a double endorsement, so two pathways awarded, depending on the units they choose. All students have to take units one and two. These enable them to demonstrate their understanding of the underpinning mathematics and scientific principles that are the foundation of engineering. They then take one or two units, units three or four, to cover the principles of either mechanical or electrical and electronic engineering. These fundamental principles provide the foundation for practical application of this knowledge in their chosen pathway in this qualification and for further study. Students then choose six more units from a range of topics such as electrical and electronic design, circuit simulation and manufacture, electrical devices and operations, automation and robotics, computer-aided design and manufacture, CAD and CAM, engineering and the environment, and mechanical simulation and modelling. This size qualification will give your students a broad understanding of engineering and also prepare them to progress to a university degree programme or into employment or an apprenticeship where they may continue to study. The different pathways enable students to learn the applied knowledge and practical skills and knowledge required for specific job roles in the engineering industry. The diploma is 720 guided learning hours, which is the same size as two AE levels. 
This size of qualification offers the same four pathways in mechanical engineering and design, electrical and electronic engineering, automation, systems and control, and manufacturing. Your students must achieve 12 units to complete this qualification. At least four of these will be externally assessed. Your students then choose eight further units, either examined or internally assessed and moderated by us. These make up the specialist pathways. Again, depending on the choice of units, your students could also achieve a double endorsement pathway. The four mandatory units will enable your students to demonstrate their understanding of the underpinning mathematics and scientific principles of engineering and the principles of mechanical and electrical electronic engineering. Your students then choose eight units from a range of topics that have a more practical nature and will increase the depth and breadth of their skills and knowledge. These include electrical and electronic design, circuit simulation and manufacture, electrical devices and operations, automation and robotics, computer-aided design and manufacturing, CAD and CAM, engineering and the environment, and mechanical simulation and modelling, as well as lean and quality and material science. Our diploma will form the bulk of your student's study programme, but gives them the flexibility to study other smaller qualifications alongside it. They could then progress to a university degree programme in a relevant engineering discipline or into employment or an apprenticeship where they could continue to study. The extended diploma is 1080 guided learning hours, which is the same size as three A levels. Your students will need to achieve a total of 18 units for this qualification. And like the other diploma qualification, this offers the same four pathways in mechanical engineering and design, electrical and electronic engineering, automation systems and control, and manufacturing. The mechanical engineering and design pathway has been merged with the electrical and electronic engineering pathway and the automation systems and control pathway has been merged with the manufacturing pathway. The extended diploma in engineering will form your students complete study programme in preparation for progression into employment or an apprenticeship. The qualification will provide the subject specific skills, knowledge and understanding and a range of transferable skills that your students will require for employment in engineering roles such as electrical and electronic engineering, mechanical engineering and design, automation systems and control and manufacturing. Plus, this qualification also gives students the breadth of engineering skills and knowledge to progress onto a degree programme. All our qualifications are fully nested and this provides a very useful facility of being able to drop students down to smaller qualifications, such as the certificate if they do not stay for the full term or change their direction, providing recognition for that which they have achieved. For other students who are highly motivated by the engineering subject area, topping up to larger size qualifications such as an extended certificate to the foundation diploma or higher, if required, is also facilitated. This is not possible with similar qualifications offered by other awarding bodies. And for those of you who are not currently delivering Cambridge Technicals, we believe this offers you and your centre a special opportunity to think differently, providing you with a real alternative choice. You'll have noticed that there are pathways at the foundation diploma, diploma and extended diploma sizes. These pathways were chosen as a result of research with both universities and employers. By developing the skills required in these four key engineering areas, they believe that students will be equipped to undertake further study in a range of engineering related areas or be well prepared to enter the workplace. Feedback from universities and employers was used to inform the content of these pathways and letters of support from both can be found on our website. The mechanical engineering and design pathway has plenty of opportunities to solve problems that help improve people's lives. It prepares your students for an engineering career in any number of engineering sectors. The successful manufacture of any product depends on well-planned, accurate and complete design solutions. Students will develop an appreciation of engineering drawings, freehand graphical techniques, formal drawing techniques, as well as computer-aided design and simulation tools with commercial CAD systems. Advanced technology, materials and material science, as well as simulation modelling are also studied in this pathway. The electrical and electronic engineering pathway offers an opportunity to understand the intricate world of electrics and electronics and has been developed to prepare your students for a career in engineering with a bias in electrical systems control. Skills necessary in engineering businesses such as aerospace and transportation will certainly include electronics 
in addition to mechanics. This pathway considers areas in electrical and electronic design, circuit simulation and manufacture, as well as detailed understanding of electronic devices that contribute to a modern, energy efficient world. The Automation Systems and Control Pathway focuses on developing skills in automated electrical, mechanical, hydraulic and pneumatic machines that are operated by systems of control. Students will explore programming techniques and program programmable logic controllers, PLCs, as well as the other embedded devices for a control system. Industrial automation control systems are dependent on engineers who know how to program them in businesses such as manufacturing, power generation, automotive, aerospace and many more. These engineers need to understand control systems and the programming methods and techniques in the specific context of these industrial control systems. The manufacturing pathway focuses on the challenges of modern global manufacturing industries and the development of skilled techniques of manufacturing and its related technologies. Your students will study industrial manufacturing engineering principles and appreciate how aspects such as computer numeric manufacture and lean manufacture are integrated so that the productivity is improved, the costs of manufacture are reduced and products and services are delivered when required. Students will also study how a business can meet the demands of its customers by the methods they use to inspect and test their goods and products prior to completion to guarantee their levels of quality. We design these qualifications with the workplace in mind, but this is particularly true for the diploma qualifications, which are truly vocational in nature and have been designed with industry to include real practical product creation activities, which use the same processes as those used in industry. Other similar style qualifications do not necessarily include these practical elements to the same extent. The diploma qualifications have been designed to take students directly into the workplace or onto an apprenticeship in the identified engineering sector roles, but also be broad enough to make sure students can continue to study via a degree programme. We've worked with a range of employers and universities throughout the development of this qualification, including Jaguar Land Rover, Siemens, National Grid, Tata Steel, Royal Academy of Engineers, Society of Operations Engineers, Cummins Engineering, Cargo Strap, Coventry University, Northampton University, Metropolitan University. We're also working with employers to create project delivery approaches. Both Siemens and OCR recognise that project approach learning encourages students to think differently about how to apply their knowledge of science, technology, engineering and mathematics to real life challenges through projects. We both strive to promote independent thinking and problem solving through our work and are committed to bringing exciting education into the classroom. Our project delivery approaches with Siemens and Green Power support the technical content of qualifications such as the Cambridge Technical and Engineering and contextualised learning makes the experience real and relevant. The modules taught in classrooms provide teachers with a structured plan to demonstrate how a range of topics work together across the syllabus providing students with an understanding of how skills and knowledge could link together in a working environment. Furthermore, it gives students the opportunity to interact with a wide range of practitioners, with specialisms in different disciplines within a particular sector, which should inspire students to formulate career plans. You must consider the relationship between the units when you plan your learning programme. To help you with your delivery planning, most units highlight opportunities for synoptic teaching and learning. Every engineer needs to have a good grasp of maths and science in the context of engineering and the students will develop this knowledge and understanding in the mandatory units. Unit 1, Mathematics for Engineering and Unit 2, Science for Engineering. These areas of learning will underpin the whole qualification. Students draw on the knowledge and understanding they've acquired through studying Units 1 and 2 and apply it in their study and assessment for every other unit. For example, Students will need to apply mathematical techniques covered in Unit 1 as they study how to design components to be manufactured through Unit 9. Every unit, except Units 1 and 2, will require the learner to apply knowledge from one or more of the mandatory units so that their ability to apply this knowledge synoptically can be assessed. That's why we strongly recommend that students complete Unit 1 and 2 before undertaking assessment in other units. It will be possible for students to make connections between other units over and above the unit containing the key tasks for synoptic assessment. Please see section 6 of the Centre Handbook for more detail. We've indicated where these links are with an asterisk 
and provided more detail in the next section of the handbook. For Unit 25, students will draw on their skills, knowledge and understanding acquired through other units and apply what they have learned to creating an improvement plan for a system, process or artefact which they have engineered and then carry out their desired improvement. This will also provide opportunities for synoptic assessment and enhance the applied nature of the qualification. Throughout the development, we've listened to the views of teachers. By doing so, we've designed qualifications that you are able to deliver using any mode of delivery that meets the needs of your students. References to real life scenarios and case studies using local examples can be used to bring the content to life and help your students to understand the relevance of what they are learning. We recommend you reference teaching and development of subject content and associated skills to real life situations and case studies. For engineering, there was a recognition that scientific and mathematical for engineering, there was a recognition that a scientific and mathematical core was needed for all sizes of qualification, and that both employers and higher education institutions needed to clearly see evidence of this taught content. At the same time, it was felt important within an implied technical qualification that the maths and science content was clearly focused on engineering. With a wide range of centre assessed units with practical and wider project based assessment opportunities. There are practical elements in many of the internally assessed units that allow students to consolidate their learning and further develop their skills, knowledge and understanding if the work experience element of the study programme is directly relevant to the Cambridge Technical Qualification. Any work they undertake during work experience could contribute to the evidence for summative assessment. You must plan this with your student and the employer so that the work allows the student to cover the requirements of the unit and you're able to authenticate it. We've worked with engineering businesses to make sure the learning is relevant for 18 year olds who are going on to work in the sector. It's essential that students appreciate how the knowledge, understanding and skills they acquire are applied in the workplace. Involving employers also creates an engaging, motivating link to work. To this end, we will require you to involve employers in the teaching, learning and or assessment delivery of their qualifications. All students must engage in activities relating to learning and or assessment where an employer has made a contribution to the activity. The employer must be directly involved in the engineering sector. We require you to complete a plan of how you will do this and to sign a declaration to confirm that every learner has had access to meaningful employer involvement. You must complete the OCR centre plan for meaningful employer involvement and make this available at each moderation session. You will find the plan on the qualification page of our website. All external assessment takes the form of written examination. There are two exam series each year, January and June. Exam dates are set by us. Should a student not achieve a pass in any of their externally assessed units, there will be an opportunity for one reset per unit at an additional cost and the best result will be used. For externally assessed units, where the content contains IE and EG, under specific areas of content, the following rules will be adhered to when we set questions for an exam. A direct question may be asked about unit content which follows an IE. Where unit content is shown as an EG, a direct question will not be asked about that example. In order to plan your teaching, you need to consider when you are going to enter your students for the exams. If you are not familiar with the exam registration, you need to take into account the entry dates for each series. The following units are externally assessed. Unit 1, Mathematics for Engineering, which is 1 hour and 30 minutes and 60 marks. It comprises short answer questions and questions requiring a more extended response. A formula booklet will be available for use with this unit, as well as being able to use a scientific calculator. Unit 2, Science for Engineering, will be 1 hour and 30 minutes and 60 marks. It will comprise short answer questions and questions requiring more extended responses. A formula booklet will also be available for this unit, as well as the use of a scientific calculator if necessary. Unit 3, Principles of Mechanical Engineering, will be 1 hour and 30 minutes and 60 marks. It will comprise short answer questions and questions requiring extended responses. A formula booklet will be available for use with the unit and a scientific calculator may be used. 
Unit 4, Principles of Electrical Engineering, will be 1 hour and 30 minutes and 60 marks. It will comprise short answer questions and questions requiring more extended responses, a formula booklet will be available for use with the unit and a scientific calculator may be used. Depending upon the qualification size chosen, the majority of units are internally assessed. This means your students will be set assessment assignments by you. You'll mark your students' work using the assessment criteria in the grading grid. You can even provide them with some feedback. Once ready, you'll make a claim and we'll moderate the work for you. To support your internal assessment, we'll provide a model assignment for every mandatory unit in the specification. You can use these with your students, adapt it to meet your local environment, or use it as a basis to create your own assignment. Because of the nature of vocational qualifications, we believe that allowing you to create assignments that meet your students' needs and interests will benefit them more and give them greater success. Your assessment assignments should reflect the practical nature of the units. For example, in Unit 9, Mechanical Design, students will develop their knowledge of engineering drawings, both freehand graphical techniques and more formal drawing techniques. They will select the appropriate engineering materials to achieve the design solutions and be able to produce a design that can be manufactured successfully and learn how to optimise a design to improve performance. If you're unsure, an assignment checking service is available and can be accessed through the CPD hub on our website. However, it's not mandatory for assignments to be endorsed by OCR. Students can be assessed at any time within their study programme and will provide you with two free moderation visits per academic year. This flexibility, combined with our efficient administration process, enables you to focus on what's important, delivering a study programme that meets the needs of your students rather than completing the additional paperwork that our competitors require. We'll moderate your claim when you're ready, but we'd suggest you plan when you'd expect your students to be ready for moderation and discuss this with your moderator and get your visits booked well in advance, particularly in the summer, as this can get very busy. Your students can resubmit an assignment if they've not performed at their best, but you must use your discretion as to whether or not this is in their interests. We believe this is a real advantage compared to our competitors, who require your students to complete a brand new assignment within a very short space of time. Our internal assessment really does put your students at the heart of the process, allowing them to reach their maximum potential. We'd strongly advise you leave time in your planning in case a unit needs to be resubmitted and please remember that if your students require UCAS points you must have all units completed and moderated by the 30th of June. For more information on internal assessment you could attend a live webinar training session or watch the support video. We provide sample assessment material for the externally assessed units. This is because we set the assessment for these units. Sample assessments show you what the assessment will look like and you can use them as practice materials. Each year, we'll make the exams from the previous year available as practice papers. You can download sample assessment material and eventually pass papers from our website at www.ocr.org.uk. To be awarded a full qualification, a student must achieve at least a pass grade for all units required for the qualification. If they don't do so, they won't be awarded the qualification. Students will be awarded a combination of pass, merit, distinction or distinction star qualification grades determined by the aggregation of points gained through the successful achievement of individual units. The number of points available for each unit depends on the unit grade achieved. For more information, please go to the qualification handbook. You will need to refer to some or all of the following JCQ documents. Instructions for conducting examinations, suspected malpractice in examinations and assessments, access arrangements and reasonable adjustments, and a guide to the special consideration process. Find these at www.jcq.org.uk. If you have any questions and want to talk to us, please feel free to do so. You can call us on 02476 851 509 or send us an email at vocational.qualifications at ocr.org.uk. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has given you a flavour of the Cambridge Technicals and Engineering and we are very much looking forward to working with you in the future.